All right, so today is, what, May 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So let's put, I, started, I started to put the dates, so I know what we do over here. These are the plans from the other day. So you see I put the date here, May 16, and I actually scanned this, so I, I will probably upload this uh, later today, okay? Okay. Or, or tomorrow. I will also give you these notes. So today, so we know when we stop May 18, and last time we were on page, man, at least on these notes, page 16, so I will be page 17. All right. So we're going to cover here what is called free. But free vibration with physical stamping. Okay, so maybe Let's go a little bit here into more detail. So what does free vibration mean? Anyone? What would be the opposite to free? Constraint. Constraint or force vibration, no? So basically what it means is that this vibration, so the equation would be this, okay? but. Basically what it means, imagine that you have, yeah, let's go to this figure. Imagine that we have this figure over here without the bar. So initially you displace the block, you hold it with your hand, and then you let go, okay? So this is going to oxidate by itself. It's going to be free, no? There is no force which is forcing the oxidation, okay? So the opposite, let's say this will be connected to a shaker on this side, okay, and that will be forcing the oxidation. So basically, free vibration means that there is no force exciting the system, or basically what it means is that the right hand side of the equation is zero. All right, the other term is viscous damping. So so viscous damping is, there's different types of damping for example, uh, there is uh, Coulomb damping, which is basically due to friction. But the most common one, from uh, yeah, the most common one is viscous damping. So viscous damping basically means is the damping produced by some type of fluid. Okay. So we kind of discussed the other day what will happen. So what is viscous? What what is the damping doing on a system? We say it's going to delay the time at which you're going to feel the response, no? So it's going to create like a lag in time between the response happening and when you feel it or receive it. Okay, what is characteristic about the viscous damping is that it is it's always proportional. So damping here would be, I will do this. Uh, we always be proportional to the velocity. Okay, and that's why we have over here this new term that is showing that is proportional to the velocity, no? C x dot on the equation. So anytime you have a fluid, you're gonna have damping. So basically, if we put this system, let's say we put this system here in class, even if we put it upside down, if we put it upside down, let's say like one of the problems, we pull it down and we let it oxidate. Will it oxidate forever or will it stop after a while? It will probably stop after a while. It probably will stop after a while and it will probably stop because of what? Drag from the air. Because of the drag from the air, no? So there is friction, okay? There is friction that creates viscous damping. So if you want to think about the viscous damping is, uh, I think there is an example on the class notes, but I don't want to talk too much about it, but. If you have one plate here which is moving with a velocity, okay, 
and you have another plate here which is moving with no velocity, what's going to happen to the flow? This is from fluids. The velocity here will be zero. And it'll be greatest up at the other plate. And then you will have this type of figure, no? Mm -hmm. Or the velocity profile. Okay? So you see that that difference in velocity in the air will create some damping or some delay on the response. Okay? That's one way to create this damping. But think about it just like all those uh, suspension systems where you might have just like a tube into or a cylinder into oil. So what's going to happen? You're transferring all the energy into the oil, no? Mm -hmm. Okay? So you're doing basically the same thing. Okay? So. All right. So let's get started. So the procedure is always the same. So considering... The system, so it would be one free body diagram. So what would be our free body diagram? We have our block over here. We have same spring as before, but this time something that is going to be new is that we're going to have here a damper. So the stiffness of the spring is defined by the letter K, and the damping here is defined by the letter C. Okay, and this would be block of mass M. Okay, so we do one. It's going to be called a free body diagram, but let's say dynamic diagram. So let's see what we we'll have here. And again, you know that I like to do two figures one for the forces, one for the inertia effects. So what would be all the forces acting on that block over here? Would be, let's assume that initially, so let's say this is X over here. So let's say initially we move all this block a little bit to the right. So what would be the force created by the spring? KX to the left. Would be KX to the left. Then what would be the other forces we'll have? We'll have, if you want on the Y, we'll have MG. We have here the reaction, we assume the friction, but then what happens here with the spring force? Force to the right of CX dot? So it will be, I mean, the force, no, it's still going to create over there. To the, uh, yeah, it's your right, my left, sorry. <laughs> so go in the same direction as KX, but this time on the equation is what? What should be the value of that force? C X dot. X dot. So the important thing over here just to remember about viscous damping is that it will be proportional to the velocity. Okay? Okay, and now what would be the FX over here? Which you can just write M X double dot. Because the type of motion is only translation. So if the motion is only translation. You write, let's say, Newton's equation. Motion just being translation. The only equation you're going to need is summation of forces equals to MA, which should give you what? If you look at the figure, you will have minus. Kx minus Cx dot minus Cx dot equals mx double dot equal mx double dot. Maybe I can just add over here on the x direction. That's the only direction we are concerned. So if I just rewrite those terms, you have mx double dot plus Cx dot plus Kx will be equal to zero.
Okay, so so what do we call this part of the chapter free vibration because the right hand side is zero and it's done because we have here this damping term which is in function of velocity. We could do as before, sign simplify the expression, but we already have enough algebra as we will see going on. So let's just keep this one as it is on the class notes. That way I can go and compare. So page 18. Okay, so step one, two, step three would be to find solution. So if you remember, within the solution, you have to follow, what, like three different steps, no? What was the first one? Assume a harmonic solution. Okay, assume harmonic solution, which means x equal to c exponential minus lambda t. Oh, look at the class notes. I put c bar, I put a little bar on top of the c to differentiate with the damping coefficient c over here. So you want, let's put it over here, c is the damping coefficient. All right, so assume the solution. Once you have the solution, then you can just say that x dot would be equal to minus lambda c bar exponential minus lambda t, and x of a dot would then be equal to lambda squared c bar exponential of minus lambda t. So we go and substitute into the equation over here. equation here will give us what? So we'll have m lambda squared c bar exponential minus lambda t minus c minus c lambda c bar exponential minus lambda t plus k c bar exponential minus lambda t. Okay, if we factor by the c bar exponential minus lambda t, we end up with what? m lambda squared minus c, the coefficient damping lambda, plus k equal to zero. So I don't remember exactly, but what were the steps I gave you to solve the equation? One, to assume the solution. Two, Two to substitute into the equation of motion. So this actually should be step two over here. Substitute. Into equation of motion. We are here. So now, what is this equation satisfy over here? If either c bar e to the negative lambda t equals zero, or if the expression in brackets equals zero. Correct. So this is what we call the trivial solution, which for us has no physical meaning, okay? That's not the one of interest. Or now, what's going to happen? So now, what type of equation is the one we have over here? Quadratic. So it's a quadratic equation. So we need to solve, or when m lambda squared 
minus C lambda plus K equal to zero. Okay, so what we need to do now is what? Is solve So solving quadratic equation, what are we going to have? The two rules, lambda 1, 2 should be equal to what? Minus, so if it's polynomial a, a lambda squared plus b lambda would be what? Would be minus b, no? Mm -hmm would be C plus or minus the plus square root of C squared minus C squared, minus C squared four. that would be C squared in this case, minus 4AC, no? Mm -hmm. So minus 4 and times K. All divided by 2M. 2 divided by 2A, and in this case A is M, so divided by 2M. Okay, or we can write this as equals to C over to M plus C over to M square minus K over M. I mean, do you see how that is done or not? If you put this 2M inside the square root, you will have to square it to get it out, no? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's square. And now here you divide 2 by M, you will see this become, this will really become what? 4M squared, no? Mm -hmm. At the bottom. So the 4 will cancel, the M will cancel, we have 1M at the bottom. But you can use either one. Hmm. Well, I think I'll be running under this form because this one <coughs> at the end I found one page of summary of results and they put it under that form. Okay, now that we have the roots for C, for lambda 1, lambda 2, what can we do? We can go back to the initial equation, no? Mm -hmm. So 1, 2, 3. Substitute. Lambda 1, 2 into harmonic solution. That would be x equal to c bar exponential of minus lambda t. So that would mean that x of t will be equal to what? Would be equal to C bar 1 exponential of, so I'm not going to put everything, okay, minus lambda 1t plus C bar 2 exponential of minus, uh, sorry, yeah, of minus lambda 2t. So maybe, yeah, I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna go to the next page. <coughs> so, if you substitute, really the equation will become what? x of t, let me do with the blue, so it'll be thinner, will be equal to c bar 1 exponential of minus c 
over 2m plus square root of c over 2m square minus k over m t plus c bar 2 exponential of minus c over 2m minus c over 2m square minus k over m we take the square root of this and close it and t Okay, and we follow the procedure. Here we know where c bar 1 and c bar 2 are constants to be determined from initial conditions. Okay, so what's important over here to see is that now the solution, you see, I just put this, but the solution is going to depend on the values of this term over here, okay, of this big term over here. You have plus, minus, plus, minus, so this might change everything. So the first case is actually to find the case for which the, this radical over here will be zero, which will mean the response will be only due to what? the minus c over 2m on this side and the minus c over 2m on that side. So case one, so let's say the, yeah, so the solution, the total solution depends on the sign of the two roots lambda 1 and lambda 2. So our first case is going to be 1 critical Critically done, but I was going to do, let's see, I'm not following this exactly. Yeah, so it's case one, critically done. And we'll see what that means. Okay, so critically that means that the term in the radical is equal to zero. So why is the term on the radical? I mean, we can use either expression, but if I follow the class notes, I use this one here, that will be 
c over to m square minus k over m equal to zero. So let's see in that case what should be the damp denoid here, c. So this will give us, uh, so we'll do some algebra. It will give us c squared over 4m squared equal to k over m, which will be what? c squared will be equal to 4m k. k. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. Uh, maybe I should have written this a bit differently. Uh, yeah, maybe. We can keep over here. What is, we can leave it this way, but maybe for, it would be easier. What is this term, really? Is the natural frequency, no? Mm -hmm. Because you remember, omega n is equal to what? Square root of k over m. Square root of k over m. So we could leave it this way, but this would really give us, okay, well, this would be equal if you want to four m square omega m square, or C, which in this case I'm going to say is C critically damped, because critically damped will be equal to what? Uh, this body square initially will be equal to 4 m square omega m square, or C critical will be equal to 2 m omega m. Okay, where CC would be the critically damp coefficient or value. Okay. Okay, so I changed a little bit in the notation, but uh, I mean in the class notes. But we're going to move on. I changed the notation at, at the end of this section. I'm going to keep going over here. So page over here. So 20. So it's, it is going to be a bit different than the class notes, okay? Online. So page 20. So for the critical that case the solution becomes what? We have x of t will be equal to c1 exponential of minus what do we have before? 
would be minus C over 2m, C critical over 2m times T plus C2 exponential of minus C C critical over 2m T. Okay, so uh, now, now, let me just restart this page. But we can leave, we can leave the, just wait for me. Still going to be page 20. So four. Critically damp solution, what we have? Lambda 1, 2 will be equal to what? Negative C critical over 2M. Negative C critical over 2M. Uh, square, no square, no square, no? No, no square. square. So basically, what is this case? So we have. Repeated words. So in that case, what would be the solution? B. So the general solution x of t for repeated roots is what? If you remember that one, it is C1 bar exponential of, of lambda 1 or lambda t. Yes, yeah, so it would be minus. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but this lambda would be this lambda, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me put lambda 1 and I want to erase this one. So lambda 1 t plus C by 2. 2 exponential of minus lambda 2 t, but it's the same root for both of them. Mm -hmm. So this will give us. So what is the mistake I'm doing here? You forgot to add a t. I forgot to add a t on the second one, no? Mm -hmm. So the solution is really x of t. I can factor out by exponential of minus c c critical over 2m. So I factor by this one. Here I should have c1 plus t c bar 2. Okay, guys, so uh, if, you, if you look at the class notes, I use a different symbol, which we're going to derive now. But this is correct, okay? There is no one way, there is not just one way to find the solutions. So let's go back now to the class notes so that we use the same notation, which is one step I forgot, but I didn't want it to go back. So now I'm going to write down defining. The damping ratio XC. This is a letter, I don't know to stop this one, this. I think it's this way, XC. <coughs> okay? The damping ratio, so we define XC equals C over C critical.
So what was C critical? This would be equal to C over, let me go to that page, what was C critical? Over 2M omega N. 2M omega N. So from that equation, we're going to get that we're going to get here that C over 2M will be equal to XC omega M. So substituting into equation, let's say, let's call this equation here one. It will give you what? X of T will be equal to exponential of minus xc omega n factor of c bar 1 plus t c bar 2. We're going to keep going with that notation. It's going to be different than the, than the class notes, but I'll try to give you then this one, OK? All right, so now we keep going. So this will not be on the class notes. So now we're going to have to help me over here. So let me write this one here. So so critically damp actually means that this factor over here is equal to one. So the solution is x of t equal to exponential minus omega n. C1 plus T C bar 2. All right, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit just to, make, to explain that again over here. So what would happen is, let's see, I'm going to add my pages. Okay, is that using, so per here, not sign up, okay? No, using the notation. with Xc, which is the damping ratio. Which is C over 2m equal to C omega m. 
the initial equation that we had, it will be long, that one, to write, so. The initial equation we had here, xt equals to c1 exponential of minus c over 2m, I use the plus or minus, plus c over 2m squared minus k over m square root t plus c2 exponential of minus c over 2m minus square root of c over 2m square minus k over m t can be rewritten as what? x of t is going to become c bar 1 exponential of what will be this, what is the c over 2m? xi omega m is xi, so let's just put xi for now, but yes, minus xi plus, if you do the transformation, it would be xi squared minus 1 square root everything times omega and t Okay, plus C two bar exponential of minus X C minus X C squared minus one. Omega and T. May I just be doing this to be very detailed about the damp case because I don't think I did the relation. And then if you want, we can prove this over here. So We have the case one, which is critically done. So I'm going back, okay, I'm going backwards a little bit, but just because I think I wasn't being specific enough. So we see that the critically done was the case in one, in which the radical needed to be equal to zero, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that would mean what? That C squared minus one, this should be equal to zero, which would mean what? C has to be 1. C is equal to, to be 1. So I did all this stuff just to prove what I read, what I, we wrote before, no? Mm -hmm. That this is the case for the Peter Uh Now we need to do, let's do it, okay? It's not on the classroom, but we can do it. Uh, okay, so since I'm not showing here, but let's see, C. So proof over here of some. What I'm trying to show is that this over here is equal to this. So C over 2M plus square root of C over 2M square minus K over M. So we want to prove that that is equal to what? Is equal to XC plus x squared minus 1 omega n, no? Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can do that stuff. I'm going to change color because no. none of them rise too good. Now let me keep going with the blue. So what do we know? The relation that we know is this. So the first term is easy. So this is going to be xc 
plus, oh, it's only the sum of we have the prime, this would be x squared So we have here the omega n, maybe it should be omega n, x c, should be omega n squared x c. Uh, what is k of m? Uh, omega n squared. Omega n squared. So the proof is very easy, no? That was going to be a bit more complicated, but. So now what happened? If I factor out by omega n, you have here xc, no? Mm -hmm. Plus this one is square, so we move out, no? It can be here. So it will become xc squared, and this will become 1, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually it was pretty trivial. But you know, I want to show everything on the cloud. page on the on my set 21. Okay, so now I think we are set for the rest. So case one, critically damped for xc for the damping ratio equal to 1. Okay, so 2, or case 2, So what could be the other case, if you look at the solution? So basically, you want to have here the solution. If you plot the critically damped solution, I think I have plotted here. Yeah, here I have the three solutions. But if you plot the critically damped solution, you want to look now some results. That way, we have an idea of what we're trying to do. So depending on the value of xc, the response is going to act differently, okay? So critically down, you see the response is first going to go up, and then it's going to be down out to zero, okay? The other case we can have is what? Is the under, uh, is, uh, under down. Means that the, the response is going to stay for a long time harmonic, no? Mm -hmm. Just the amplitude is going to slow down, but it might take a long time. You see here it goes up to 50. And the other one is over them, meaning that the response is gonna dump very quick to zero. So we did this case over here. Now we're gonna do, which one is coming? Now we're gonna do this one over here. And if you remember, yesterday, what did we say about the face plane? Remember, we said that if you have a motion which is harmonic, what should be the shape of this? Perfect circle. Just a perfect circle, no? So let's say it would be this one. Now, if the system is critically damped, meaning that if we follow this line over here, so we start over here, and it goes very quick to zero, no? Mm -hmm. The over damp is something similar over here, but the, crit the critically damped, you see that the response stays harmonic for a long time, as is converges. This, this would be the phase plot. So the phase plot basically means is velocity with respect to time. If you're taking controls, every time in controls, what do you try to do? You try to write down the response in function of, in function of the state space representation. Did you have controls or not yet? I thought. Okay, you will see. Probably in that task, you're going to want to write everything in function of x and x dot. Okay? All right, so we did this one. Now let's try to do this one, uh, the under that. So that one is the longest one and the most used because the other one, the response goes to zero. So under that. Which in this case means that the damping 
coefficient xc is lower than 1. case, what do we have? So let's remember, so the radical, which is what? x c squared minus 1. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen in this case? If x c is lower than 1, then the radical will be negative. Then this will be negative, no? Mm -hmm. All right. So if that's negative, what does that mean? That means that the square root will be an imaginary number. Correct. It will be an imaginary number because that would be negative. Okay, so the two roots of the equation, lambda 1, Remember the expression general for lambda? Did we write that before? Uh, let's say lambda 1, 2. What is c over 2m plus or minus? Yeah, but then we wrote it in function of c, no? Ah, yes. That's the one I'm trying to find here. Uh, okay, I think that's c uh, plus or minus the square root of c squared minus 1 all multiplied by omega m. Yeah. Basically, this is, this is going to mean what? That the first root, I'm switching to the uh, x1 would be equal to what? Would be equal to xc. So this term is negative, so it becomes what? Plus i c minus 1, everything. Omega n, or the second one would be the same thing but with a negative value. Omega n. The solution x of t becomes switch to the blue, so it's going to be not a very pretty connection. It will become x of t will be equal to what? Uh, to what? Equal to c bar 1 exponential of minus, so the first root, c plus i, 6 squared minus 1, square root, everything omega and t, plus c bar 2, exponential of minus xc minus i square root minus 1 everything omega and t. Okay, or well I can write that expression as x of t will be equal to exponential of minus, so I can multiply this one here, xc. Let me write it down and then if I need to give details how I did it, I can do it. 
but what is your uh, exponential of a plus b is equal to exponential a exponential b, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. So if we use that property, we can write, we can move this term over here out, and then we have over here c bar 1 exponential of minus i 6 squared minus 1, and then this will be omega and t plus c2 exponential of i 6 squared minus 1 omega and t. All right, so now, uh, where in this case many times, the frequency here, omega and of x squared minus one, they write it under omega sub d. Okay? I don't think I use it much on this on the class notes, but I know many textbooks use it. So what is omega what do you think is omega sub d? Dense natural frequency. Correct. So you see this is the natural frequency over here. And basically this is the damping over here, no? So this will be the damp. natural So I'm not going to do a derivation. I'm just, it's not the class was derived, but I'm just going to mention it here. All right, so the next thing over here, I'll tell you today was a lot of notation going on. So 23. So I'm just, I'm just going to write it down, but using Power's identities. Remember, we did it for the harmonic solution where we had no damping. We still had the exponential, and at the end, we ended up with what? With one expression that was only in front of the sign, no? Yeah. <coughs> so, so, no. so, this would be the same thing. Using the other expression, plus going, so other expression and so which is what? The exponential of minus i theta equal to what? Cosine theta minus i sine theta e and theta equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta and trig relation the one we used was what? Uh, was sine of u minus d yesterday. Mm -hmm. This was equal to what? 
uh, sine of u cosine of v minus sine of v cosine of u. Yeah. Okay, so we use all this stuff. We have that x of t can be written as amplitude of exponential of minus x c omega and t sine, so I'm going to use the notation omega sub t t minus phi. Okay, and if you remember, what would be the amplitude equal to? The square root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah. And the phase was equal to the minus tangent of a over b. Okay guys, so the derivation is another important because at the end you will be allowed to use one page with those expressions, okay? The ones like for the final. I'll show it to you lot. So uh, I think I should have it here. I think I, when I did the division of these of these equations, I did I did it in such a way that I could use this page over here. Okay? Which you, you will be allowed to use during the exams. Pointing. So, so basically, you see that's why I use the C over here. Oh, this is a different one here, and this one over here. You see it with the XC values. That's why I decided to move to that one. Okay, so it's not that clear, but this is all with the XC values. You see the one we drag here. Mm -hmm. It's the same one. So that's why I use that division. Uh, but what I want to show here is what? What's more interesting would be, let's go back. So let's look at the solution over here. And we know this would be this case, no? Mm -hmm. Okay? So this, how many terms do you have in this solution? You have the amplitude. The amplitude is not that important. It's whatever you have here at the beginning. But the amplitude, what would be the, the terms driving the solution? Probably psi, omega n, omega d, and phi. Okay, but basically you agree that the sine function over here, so if we needed to plot the sine function, the sine function would be the one going this way, no? Mm -hmm. Okay? If we needed to do another plot with the minus exponential function, it would do what? Just decay to zero. It would do something of decay of zero. So if you look at it, it's not pointing here on this figure. But this will almost be like we are here, the, the, the equation for the exponential function, no? Mm -hmm. On this side, and between those two curves, you will have the harmonic solution, which will be the sun part, no? Of the damp frequency that will squeeze between the damp solution. Mm -hmm. Okay? So basically, so the, the bigger the, this term over here, What's going to happen to this? The faster is going to do that, no? Yep. If this is small and this is this is still about the same, this might take a very long time to get done. All right. So when you think about it, maybe you think about this about is five seconds, ten seconds, fifteen seconds, fifteen seconds, or let's say hundred seconds allowed for this course to be done. There is not one answer, no? It might depend on the system you're doing, correct? Yes. So I don't know, if you, have, if you are trying to do a control of a car, of a race car, you want the response to be done quick, no? Mm -hmm. Within maybe less of a second, yeah? So this would not be a good thing to have this type of response. But let's say 
I don't know, you have a structure outside that the only thing you want to do is to dive is if he, if he gets hit by something, no? Mm -hmm. If he gets hit by something, you don't care if he's damped in two seconds or in 20 seconds, all right? As long as he gets damped out after a while, you are happy with it. You don't have to do something afterwards. All right, so we do the last case, which would be the other damp. Case three, which is also point three, is the one that's called the overdump. Which is the case that the damping ratio is higher than one. So in this case, what's gonna happen to the radical? is going to be positive. So if it's positive, what would be the two roots? So let's do it again. So lambda, one, two, were equal to what? Uh, C plus minus, C squared minus one, times omega n. So now what we're gonna have second root would be C minus C squared minus one times omega n. Base 24. So the general solution becomes what the x of t equals c bar one exponential of minus c plus six squared minus one omega and t plus c bar two exponential minus x c minus x c minus one omega and t. All the nice let me get organized a little bit here.
Yeah, I think I want to keep it over here. I don't want to go too far. Okay. So in all three cases, which are what? Critically damped, under damped, and upper damped. Correct. So critically damped. Under damped. And over damped. The constants C1 and C2, or in the case A and B, are what? Determined by initial conditions. Yeah. From initial conditions. In most cases, the initial conditions are of the form. So let's see. If we do the example as I mentioned before, now we have the block. Uh, initially, we displace it a certain distance. And then we let it go. So if we think about that case, what would be the two initial conditions? Um, where is and what time? OK, so at x equal 0, what would be the position? 0. Okay. Uh, would be, sorry, we have a certain position. It's the opposite. So we displace it at the beginning, no? It's so mm -hmm. at 0, we displace it. So the initial condition would be we displace that to the same two position x sub 0. Now we need another condition. The other condition would be given by what? The initial velocity. The initial velocity. So let's say v at t equals 0, which would be the same thing as saying at x dot at t equals 0. And what would be the velocity in that case? x dot naught. Yes, but in that case, when we pull, we hold it, no? Oh, so zero. No? So it's 0. This is the more classical case. So remember, this is not 0. This is x sub naught, no? Mm -hmm. All right? So obviously, if you do the symbolic, it would be x sub naught. But sometimes we do a problem, and you will have to. So what will be the case? The x sub naught, the smaller it is, the faster the response will be damp out, no? The bigger you do it, max, max, uh, bigger will be the amplitude. So I know you have access to the class notes, but here are the pages I just showed you. So what about you go to those class notes, otherwise I can do it, whatever you want. Uh, let me see if I can zoom on this on these ones here. Okay, I can zoom. Okay, now. Can you see better now? Or? Yeah, so basically, you see, this is basically critically damp, mean, mean the damping equal to zero. This will give the type of solution. So what happened here, okay, I didn't do it in class because it takes a while, but if you apply those initial conditions, all right, the solution would take which form? X sub naught plus V naught minus omega N X sub naught times T. Okay, so it's already giving you the solution, all right? Then for the under damp, basically it's the same thing. This is the giant expression that I gave you. Here, this is the same that I gave you, but instead of using the sine, it's using the cosine. Does that really matter? No. You sine or cosine, it's still an harmonic solution, no? All right? And then over here, you see what happened. This is the expression we had over here, but with the two constants here are not C1, C2. They call them D1, D2 over here. I don't know why. But in the case where the initial position is 0, or x sub naught, the velocity is 0. I mean, here they do with a certain velocity. but. If you have this, this would be the expressions, okay, with the initial conditions. So this is the full expression 
after applying the initial conditions. And then the last case, which is the over dam, basically you have the same thing. Okay? But this time it's also applying the initial conditions, it will give you all the solutions. Alright, so if you go to the class notes, there is all those derivations about what would be the form of the equation after you apply the initial conditions. They are all done on the class notes using Maple. Okay? So I wasn't going to start writing here like four pages of algebra, no? So I just want to give it to you. Alright? So, still have 10 minutes, but I think that's it for today. So, one thing. So guys, so the next step we're going to be doing is that right now, you have seen that the, if you want the analytical solutions for these problems, do not look very pretty, no? <laughs> okay, and it's not a matter of memorizing or anything. So, uh, they might take a while, you know, to have those expressions and to go through all of it, you know, might be a bit cumbersome. So my goal, the next one is one, so the next slide will be solving one problem, but it will be all the damp. We follow the equations, we find, we put values, and we find what will be the final solution, okay? But then, what is useful is that all these equations, the initial condition was what? Was a differential equation. So you can find the exact, you can find the analytical solution as we did, or we can go and try to use what? To find a numerical solution using math, uh, MATLAB. <laughs> and that's a lot faster and it should be applicable to any type of equation, no? So it should give you the solution for either case, depending on the value that you have. But obviously what's important over here is that, yes, it's good to use numerical solutions, but you need to understand what is the solution giving you. Because what happens when you use numerical solution? You lose all the physics that we have been doing so far, no? Like looking at each term on the, on the solution and say, what is this term doing? What is the mean of this term? Is this critically damp, over damp, under damp? No? If you don't look at the shape and you don't know what the shape of each one looks like, you're not going to be able to determine what type of solution it is. Okay? So that's the other thing is that, yes, the numerical is very friendly. You get a solution right away. But sometimes it's more important to understand the solution than the solution itself, to know what is happening. So the only way for you to understand what's happening is to at least look at once what is the analytical solution and trying to understand what is the meaning of each one of the terms. Okay? So that's the important part of all this section. So let's go through this very quick if you want. We have a few more minutes. What is the... So let's talk about the first one. So the first one corresponded to what? Too critically critically damped. Damped. So we have two repeated roots, no? So now we have the solution C1 plus C2T. <coughs> Okay, in this, in this case, what is the response going to do? It's going to, is, this time here is not that important because the exponential will always be the time, no? So what is the response going to do? It's going to just decay to zero. Exponentially decrease, no matter what. Yeah? And that's the way we say we should look in this case over here. All right? The next case is the more delicate because is the other dam. In this case, we have two roots, so basically it means that xc, the damping ratio is lower than one, which will mean what? That the term within the radical was uh, negative. negative. So being negative, we have two imaginary roots. Okay? The imaginary roots, we did all the equation, blah, 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 we ended up with this expression here. Instead of cosine, we had the sine. So we have the periodic function over here and the exponential function. So, in matter of time, which function should dominate? The exponential one. The exponential function. So this is still going to decay, but this time will be in function of the damping, no? So the higher the damping, the, the faster the response will decay. All right? And the third case, which now is a lot older. OK, but don't look, oops, let's see here. I wouldn't look at the at these expressions here, we just look at the first one, alright? And this one here, 
and this one can be a little more tricky, but in this case, what's gonna happen? We know these ones will be positive, okay? So what does that mean? Oh, so both of them will be positive, so what's gonna mean? What, do, what dominant is gonna dominate? The term C1 or C2? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the should be <coughs> C1. C1 will dominate, no? Yeah. No matter what. Okay, so what would be the response? Would be whatever would be, uh, would be C1 or C2, let's see, because we'll be, so this would be negative, negative. Oh, yeah. It will be positive, okay. negative. So this term is going to decay a lot faster okay. than this one. You see, this one will be negative mm -hmm. minus a positive, negative, no? So actually, it's this term which is going to dictate probably the response. And then if the, the response doesn't decay that fast, it's probably because of this term, no? Mm -hmm. All right? And then it's a little bit tricky because here can be a little bit more difficult to figure out what is really the difference between yeah, what is more? This is can be a little bit more tricky to see what is the difference really between the critically damped and the overdamp, no? Will be a little bit difficult to determine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, yeah, it can be tricky. All right. All right, so that's it for today. So next time we do one problem, we do it following the equations, and then I'll show you how to do the numerical solution. All right. So let's stop the recording now.